In this video, I'm going to teach you the flat serve. Whether you're a beginner or you've been serving with the wrong grip for a long time, the flat serve is the easiest serve to learn. So let's get started in five simple steps. Let's get started with the stance. And remember, this is a video for beginners, so there are other things that once you master the serve, a little bit more that we want to add, but for now, let's keep it super simple. So when you're in your ready position to serve, you want to be side on to the net, so your shoulder and your hip face towards the net. The tip of your front foot, for me that's my left, wants to point towards the opposite doubles alley or the net post. And I'm going to have about a shoulder width stance. So I don't want to be too far, I don't want to be too close. The stance doesn't change whether you serve from the ad side or from the deuce court. Shoulder width, and now you see I'm facing side on. The tip of my front foot is pointing towards the doubles alley or towards the net post. Either one is fine. I don't have a preference where the back foot is positioned and where it's pointing to. The only thing that you don't want is to do the Charlie Chaplin. When I have newer players, I like to start for them in the platform stance. And what that is, is simply that you are standing shoulder width apart and you're not bringing your foot up. So that is how I was taught. And that is called the pinpoint. And that just adds more elements. And the more elements we have, the more we can mess up. So let's keep it very simple at the beginning. The second step, and you knew it was coming, the continental grip. You have to have the continental grip. If you don't, you will never learn the slice serve and you will never learn the kick serve properly. So how do you find it? One simple way that works all the time is let it dangle from your non-dominant hand, form a V with your dominant hand, put it on the frame and slide down like so. So when you're looking at it from the top, you should see that the V here is now on this bevel and the underside of your index finger knuckle and the meaty part of the palm are on bevel number two. And we start counting from the top, one, two. So it's as if you were going in for a handshake. That is my continental grip. And in my experience, a lot of recreational players are tossing the ball too far in front. And that is for two reasons. Actually, three reasons. Number one is, as coaches, we do say a lot, toss the ball in front, but we're not very specific. So about a foot, foot and a half, is perfectly fine for a recreational player. Number two is we watch TV. And yeah, if you do see Ben Shelton, for instance, he's extreme. He is tossing the ball what feels like two yards inside the court, but he has the strength with his leg. He is dynamic and fast enough to get into his load and then accelerate out. He can do that. Not many people that I teach could do that. So again, bring that toss to about a foot, foot and a half. Reason number three simply is if you have served with the frying pan grip, it is so much more comfortable to toss the ball further in front and hit it somewhere here. If you're now changing into the proper grip and you're still tossing the ball as far in front, you're gonna hit down on the ball every single time. So about a foot, foot and a half, that actually was perfect. That allows you to reach up and be fully extended. You will have a slight tilt here. So you don't want to hit it directly over your head here. You want to hit it out here. And that is where the one foot, one and a half helps a lot more rather than doing that. So how do you get the ball into the same spot every single time? I favor just holding the ball in the front of your fingertips here, the first two, three links, and then pointing the arm towards your doubles alley or the opposite net post. Again, this is a video for beginners or for people that have to rework their serve. So if you're now going like, yeah, but Roger Federer does that. Yeah, Roger does what Roger does. Let's leave Roger out of it. You want to release the ball after you keep your arm straight at about eye level so that when you're releasing, your palm is pretty much parallel to the ground. And when you're now releasing, the ball straight up and ideally with no rotation on the ball, you have the perfect distance. 
Here's a great drill to work on a straight ball toss. You're not trying to trap the ball or anything. What you're doing is you're going to as close as possible to the fence here. And now when you're releasing and you were to release it too early, which means that your hand is still pointing upwards, you would toss the ball into the fence. If you're releasing it too late and your palm is pointing backwards, well, yeah, you would release the ball and toss it behind you. So here, meh, doable. If you release it in the proper place between nose and top of the head, you have a pretty straight toss. How high should your toss be? I've always been successful with a toss that's about two feet higher, about two feet, than your full extension. You don't want to toss it too high. Whoa, right up there because you're just gonna have to wait for it to come down. And the longer the ball has to drop, the faster it will be. So it becomes really difficult to coordinate the proper contact point. And of course, if it's too low, you can't reach up and you kind of have to crouch down to still make contact somehow. Where, in terms of variation right and left, should you be tossing the ball for a flat serve? In front of the tip of your left foot, if you're a right-hander. So, you have probably heard the clock analogy. So we have a 12 o'clock, six o'clock. This is the straight here. Anything from 12.30 to one o'clock is acceptable. And you will notice, again, that you're not going to hit the ball straight on here. You do not want this to be straight. There will be a slight angle here, and that's perfectly normal. That's what you want. And when you're practicing your serves, do make sure that if it's a bad toss and you don't like it, let it come down. Don't ingrain bad habits. The serve is such a crucial part of tennis, obviously. But if you want to learn high percentage patterns that top players are using, you need to check out the Fuzzy Yellow Balls app. It's as simple as opening the app, Fuzzy Yellow Balls app, and then clicking on the new rules of singles 2023. And what you'll get is from A to Z, a breakdown of patterns that have proven with statistics to be highly successful. And they're presented by Will Hamilton and Craig O'Shaughnessy, the leading tennis analytic. So check out the Fuzzy Yellow Balls app. I'm gonna drop the link down below in the description. And let's keep going now with the flat serve. Now comes the part that poses the biggest problem to my mind to people that are either new to serving or who are reworking their serves from a frying pan grip to the proper grip. The upswing. If you've ever hit serves with the frying pan grip, all you do is this. But if you were to do this motion now with the proper grip, well, what you would do is you would hit the ball with the frame. So what you now have to incorporate, stands sideways, proper grip. You have your racket drop. And what that means is that the tip of your racket points down and your elbow points up to the sky. So from this position, instead of just doing this with the frying pan grip, you now have to use your shoulder and your forearm to pronate and an internal rotation here with the shoulder. So a long axis rotation that's called so that when you're swinging up, you're still leading with the edge of the racket, but then you're making contact with the ball flat on. And because it's such a new motion, we're gonna go in a progression from really simple and slow to faster. I really do like to simplify it even without a racket. So instead of just coming forward here, you're now working on turning your hand as if you wanted to high five somebody up high. And you can just do this. Just to get the feel for what your arm and your shoulder, your hand needs to do. Make sure that you have your proper stance and you do have your continental grip, only that this time, you're just sliding down to about here. So you're choking up, toss, and again, you're just working on this. Then you're moving back a little bit and you go to full grip. Still same thing, check your positioning, check your grip.
that's it. All right, let's go back to the baseline. Let's go slow. No power, no pace, just checking. Stance, grip. Yep, that actually would have been a good toss. That's it, you don't have to hit any harder than this in the beginning. Now let's talk about the finish. When you've put in the correct steps at the beginning of the motion, stance, grip, toss, if you're a right-hander, you should follow through tucking that racket in by your left hip. And I always like to check if you can see the butt cap now, because that means that you had your internal shoulder rotation and you didn't do this. 